Welcome to 3D Optics Tutorials. Today we are going to show you how to create a custom optic in 3D Optics. First we need to create a new file. I've pre-populated this file so we can just move into the project. Okay, now to create a custom optic in 3D Optics, we need to use a template optic from the optics catalog. If you've seen the tutorial, adding catalog optics, this will be familiar. If not, we will go over this in detail anyway. First, we want to right click in our 3D layout, and this pops up the menu, and we're going to select Open Optics Menu. I've already found a lens I want to use, but note that you can use any lens in the optics catalog. The lens I have chosen is a stock 2 inch diameter Thor Labs lens. The part number is LA1384. Let's go ahead and search for that here in the search bar. Okay, so this will populate a list of possible lenses. As we can see, the correct lens was put into the list, and we're going to choose the uncoded option. Let's go ahead and select. Okay, now that we have our lens populated in 3D Viewer, we are going to click on it and then right click, and we're going to go to the optical settings here. This will bring us to lens prescription, which is where we can modify this and create a custom lens. So to create a custom lens in 3D Optics, we do need a template lens, and that's why we've selected one from the catalog. But from here, we can change some of the parameters and create that custom lens. Okay, and here we can see what the basic information of the lens is. And down below, there is an Optics Geometrical Properties tab right here. Let's click on this. Now from here, we can see the diameter of the lens, the center thickness, and the first surface radius. Now, note that this is a plano convex lens, so we only have one surface radius. The other has a radius of infinity, since it is planar. Okay, the next three parameters show the different focal lengths for the lens. Okay, now let's look at the parameter description up in the top right of the lens 3D viewer. So if we click on image, this will pull up an image of the parameters and how they're defined. As you can see, the effective focal length will be longer than the back focal length because it's measured from the principal plane and the back focal length from the plano part. And the front focal length, which is not described here, is coinciding with the principal plane here. And so the effective focal length and the front focal length will be the same. Okay, first thing we're going to do is change the name. We're going to change the name to Reduce Diameter Extended Focal Length. And now we're going to go down and change the diameter to 40 millimeters. All right. As you can see, it got shorter here in the 3D layout. And the radius of curvature to 200 instead of 64. OK. As you can see, this surface got a little bit flatter. Uh, we can also see that our effective focal length, back focal length, and front focal length all change, so we now have a longer focal length lens. And note, as an approximation, the radius of curvature is roughly half of the focal length for a lens. And lastly, let's change the center thickness. Go to 5. That looks pretty good. Okay, now this can serve multiple purposes to reducing the center thickness. The first is that we can reduce unnecessary thickness of the glass substrate for the lens by making it a bit thinner. Secondly, we can increase the thickness to refract the light rays more. And lastly, we can increase the thickness to allow enough glass substrate at the edges if we're worried about manufacturability. Because if you have a very small amount of substrate at the edges of your lens, they're prone to getting damaged during manufacturing. Okay, and now the next option below is the Materials tab. Here we can select the glass substrate to use. Note that this is the only option to change here, and the dispersion equation is set to the original lens manufacturer's specification, which is the Selmeyer equation. Now when we change the glass substrate, we will notice that both the focal lengths from the above and the dispersion information here will change as well. Now, on the right here, we can change the wavelength of interest, but note that this simply displays the specific wavelength information for all the parameters in these two tabs. So this is just something to find out what the new information is for your wavelength of interest. Back to 550. Okay, so let's go ahead and change our material. We'll just select something from the list, doesn't really matter which. 
And as you can see, once we select that material, our focal lengths, our index refraction, and the coefficients for the Selmayr equation update automatically. And if we change the wavelength of interest, we can see we can find the specific parameters for that wavelength. Okay, so everything's looking great here, and this is how we create custom optics from catalog optics. Now we're going to save our optic, and we can see it pops up here. Okay, now if we click on our newly designed lens, then on the right, the ribbon bar will pop up. And if we click the part info, we can see that there's now a customized designation here. And this is made so we can't override the catalog optics in the 3D optics uh, catalog. Okay, so now that we have designed this custom lens, let's see if we can go find our new design in our own private catalog. All right, so we're going to right click and go back to the optics menu. And now under ownership, we're going to go to private. Okay, and down here are ways we see our new design. Okay, great. And if we click on it, we can insert it into our optical system, just like any other catalog optic. Now, this design is saved to our private optics catalog and is searchable by us. If we go back to the optics menu, if we have this set, the ownership set to private or all, we'll be able to query that lens from the optics catalog. Okay, this is a great feature to use if we want to start out with a template optic and change the parameters until the desired optical parameters are met. Now, there is one other option that we can use to customize our lenses. We're going to go back to the optical settings. We're going to go to optical surfaces. As you can see, we have a front surface and a back surface. So the front surface will be the curved surface. And the back surface will be the plano surface. Let's click on the front surface. And from here, we have a couple different options for the surface settings. We have simulation and scattering. We will go over these in another video, but let's go to surface shape. And as you can see, we can enable surface shape component. And from here, we can select a surface shape model to use. Now there's a couple models to use. These are a little bit more advanced, so you really need to know what you're doing if you're going to use these. I do use the Zernike fringe sag from time to time to customize optics. But again, a little bit more advanced. This is something we can go over in a future video. Okay. Now that we know how to create a custom lens from a stop optic in the optics catalog, I hope this helps in prototyping and designing custom optical systems in 3D optics.